there had been a technological breakthrough during this period um, where for the first time ever you could have your own four track tape recorder. Before that it didn't exist. And everybody in the band had bought a, either a Docorder or a Tayac 3340S, mm -hmm. which was uh, the, the entry level four track reel to reel machine. Absolutely. And um, everybody in you know, my age group, you know, would, it's obviously an antique, but I still have mine. Yeah, and I do it's, too. A, it's a reel to reel machine, you know, and uh, it had manual simul sync, so you, you know, it was, right. it was it very, very ancient. But um, it was the only, you could actually work on material by yourself in your own house. So um, that's how Buck wrote Reaper. He wrote it on a, on a four track machine in his house, and it was just very different than the era where we were all writing in a band house. So um, he laid that song in everybody, and I'll be honest, I thought it was a little light for us because we were sort of a heavy band, you know. And, uh, but everybody liked it. Not that I didn't like it, I just thought it was a little light. I said, it doesn't really sound like BOC, but you know, it was, it was proven itself. It was a top 10 single and uh, certainly launched us from the opening or middle act to a headliner. And how was your head at that point in time? We were thrilled. A hit. Egos? The freaking miracle. Did you think it was going to happen over and over at that point? You know, it's hard to put that head back on, but probably at that time we got a little full of ourselves, you know, for the next few years, you know, because uh, you have a million seller and all of a sudden, you know, you know, holy shit, I must be cool. Right. I don't know. Well, Cities on Flame got some airplay and off the first record, and each record did better than the next. So we were sort of building, but I think it was more of a grassroots thing, some airplay. And um, we were actually playing with much bigger bands and, and doing well and, you know, creating, you know, a grassroots appeal. And also, I guess like today, because nobody has Letterman, you know, from those days to go on and be a new band and all of a sudden be on national television. Right. Uh, this is pre-MTV. Um, so uh, different days. You know, it's hard to explain that to a young person today. You know, today, I mean, Letterman and Leno have on like any new up-and-coming band they can get their hands on. There was nothing like that in those days. 